Hello everybody and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2 and today we are going to be doing some fake things. We're going to make a fake solar system because according to user Tower Defense 661, he wants us to make a solar system with just objects and no planets. So it's going to be like a, one of those uh, things that like when you're a baby, it would be like a mob, is that mobile, mobile? Uh, <laughs> so let's make a fake solar system and we're going to do a number of, number of other things too, but this is what we'll start with. What would be a fake sun? We need a fake sun. Uh, random objects. So what do we got? Objects? Something bright. Obviously we need a bright object, but it's, that'd be great if we just had a flashlight. <laughs> you kind of just flickering the light on and off, like on, off, on, off, sun, off, sun, dead, life, death, life, death. The Great Pyramid of Giza. And I want it to be spinning a little bit. Can I make this thing spinning? It's a rotational period. One second. It takes one second for it to spin. There we go. And it needs to have some kind of... Can I tilt this just a little bit? X.5. There we go. It's just tumbling through space. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be our sun. It's going to be the Great Pyramids and everyone's going to be worshipping it. I mean, I guess I could be boring and I can just make Planet 1, Planet 2, Planet 3, Planet 4, Planet 5, Planet 6, and yada yada yada. But that's stupid. We have to... Every planet has to be unique in some way. Or what would Mer what do I, what do I want Mercury be? I can make a marble be Mercury. We're gonna make this thing super close. It's gonna be super close like that and that's gonna be Mercury and it's gonna have to dodge the spinniness of the Great Pyramid. Oh my god. I forgot that thing is spinning pretty damn fast. This is technically just a marble. This is weird. It looks just like a really tiny. That would be terrifying seeing that in the sky right there on our on our fake planet. We just have the Great Pyramid of Giza freaking out. A little teapot. We'll make a little teapot short and stout right here. That's what the hell is a minor tetradon. I don't know what a minor tetradon is, but that's going to be plant. Actually, no, what's going to be planet Earth? We got to make the police box planet Earth. The United Kingdom, England. The United Kingdom officially rules our planet as the police box from this distance away, <laughs> worshiping the Great Pyramid of Giza. I think Mars is going to be the jack-o'-lantern this far out right here. Now, what's going to be Jupiter? It has to be a massive object. I think a, I think the bowling ball. Uh, let's go object. Yeah, the bowling ball. That'll be Jupiter <laughs> out here, <laughs> since it's like a pretty big object and it's very very massive. I don't know, the third stage of- oh wait! That's perfect! The third stage of Saturn V is gonna be Saturn, obviously. There we go. Alright, maybe I should've made the Juno spacecraft be, uh, Jupiter, since that orbits Jupiter. Juno spacecraft will be right about here. Okay. And hopefully, that doesn't throw everything off. So we got a satellite instead of a planet. We have a rocket stage, and it's, which is actually pretty damn massive. <laughs> <laughs> it may actually even be more massive than the Juno probe, uh, which doesn't make that much sense, but uh, So what do we need now? We need Neptune and Uranus. What is a minor tetradon? I don't know, but that's gonna be Uranus. That's gonna go right where Uranus is, the minor tetradon. Okay, that's what I, I think I've heard of a tetradon before. Yeah, it's just like a pyramid. Uranus is a pyramid. Neptune is the Phantom Zone. What's the Phantom Zone? It's kind of cool. What's the Phantom Zone? Phantom Zone is... Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, this is it. these are the developers of the game, of Universe Sandbox. And I've actually, I met I met a few of them at uh, PAX Prime. <laughs> so we have the developers... We have the developers of Universe Sandbox. Oh, here we go. It was all mirrored like that. And last but not least, we're going to include Pluto in the fun. It's going to be the New Horizon spacecraft super far out and we'll zoom in on this and see the new horizon spacecraft's <laughs> view of our pyramid which is actually a pretty pretty solid view i mean it's obviously like i said it's not going to be 100 percent the scale relatively relative to our solar system but this is my fake solar system but i need to create some kind of asteroid belt or something maybe that's what the billiard balls will be a bunch of i don't know pool ball one <laughs> We'll have a bunch of pool balls in here. Yeah, I'm gonna lose sight of all of my stuff here So you can actually see the pool balls orbiting <laughs> They're actually really close to everything because it's the scale just think of scale here and now all of these pool balls Are going to move and to completely destroy my computer probably uh, We'll just see how stable 
this solar system will be. Maybe I should take off the, the labels here. There we go, because that way, uh, things, that way it doesn't look too clustered up. Okay, so all the orbits of every single pool ball and every single planet are still going. I'm going to wait and see how long it'll take before something hits something. Because this is actually a cool concept. I don't think this nothing in here is really massive enough to have a significant gravitational pull. Uh, compare, like, with, with, with two objects. Like, I don't think you can get a billiards ball to orbit uh, the Great Pyramid, the, you know, the, the Egyptian pyramids. But the, the, the theory of it is still true that everything has a gravitational pull. Like, even yourself, it's very, very weak. It's a very, very weak force, but it is still there. Let's go into, I don't know, uh, minor objects and let's get, a, let's get Halley's Comet. <laughs> here is Halley's Comet and here is our ant solar system, <laughs> which is still pretty big for the average person. That's a pretty good size. Now it's going to completely disrupt the solar system, but I want to really slow things down and I'm going to see what happens when we bring in an asteroid like this. Let's see how much, uh, let's see if the, the, the system here survives. Here we go. Things are moving. Things are moving. Oh, oh, it, it's pointing. It's pointing towards the pyramids like I've locked my sights. That was so weird. Oh, oh my God. That is awesome, actually. We've just created some planetary art. Whoa! Is anything colliding? Oh, some things are colliding. Some things are just taking sharp turns. I can't, I've completely lost track of everything. Holy sh... And it just sucks up everything. Oh! Oh, that is beautiful! And then everything else just gets flung out of the solar system. And I don't know, I guess they live happily ever after. But I want everything to come back. We need to place something a little bit more massive. These things, I'm not going to let them get away this easily. Deimos! Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? No, I... Oh, my God. <laughs> and... Whoop. And... Whoop. Who will be the last survivor? Some things are crashing, but other things are surviving. <laughs> Now I have you. You are mine. Whoop. Police box has survived. Our planet Earth. <laughs> Our planet Earth has survived the great asteroid. Uh, asteroid second coming. That's our that's our conclusion of our experiment is that if if all of our planets shrunk down to random inanimate objects that somehow were able to orbit the Great Pyramid of Giza, our planet would be most likely to survive in this kind of situation if the solar system suddenly got invaded by a random asteroid. So you can go to bed tonight taking great comfort in that fact that you are in safe hands if any if any supervillain got a shrink ray for the solar system. Leonidas Olympia asks, or no, he demands. Leonidas, Leonidas Olympia demands me to make Pluto a planet again. I have no idea how to do that. Make Pluto a planet again. <laughs> uh, and I also, I loaded up the moon simulation. The Pl uh, Pluto actually has its moon Charon, which actually kind of makes it a, a binary system because the mass of Charon is actually really large for a moon, which makes the, uh, the center of mass between Pluto and Charon not in Pluto, it's actually in between them, which makes it, I guess, a binary system. So they're kind of they're kind of orbiting each other to an extent. We have to come up with some kind of ceremony to induct Pluto back into the system of planets, the coalition, the the League of Planets, the, the, the club. Pluto wants to be a part of the club. And I don't know how to make Pluto part of the club. What are, what are some terrible things that have happened to planets? Uh, that has not happened to Pluto. Pluto needs an extinction level event where all the dinosaurs died. So let's give Pluto an extinction event, which I'm sure it's had before. <laughs> We're going to launch an asteroid, random asteroid. Here we go. Okay. Blessed. Bless. And bless. Just keep blessing Pluto. 
This can keep blessing you until you're a planet again. But what if we make Sharon, Charon, what if we make Charon collide into Pluto, which will end up colliding into Charon? Charon is moving very, very rapidly here. What if we just predict? Oh, shit. Okay, I gave Pluto a spin. So sorry, Pluto. I gave you a nice spin kind of like uranus we've given pluto uranus traits okay we have to let me try this one more time i'm going to collide pluto wait a minute wait a minute are you flying around are you flying past charon or what uh collide okay okay now collide in the charon that might be good enough that might have been good enough yes and it got sucked into there Okay, so it has consumed about four Charons. <laughs> it should be plenty massive enough. And now it's like a kind of a rogue planet in the solar system. I don't know, I'm always messing up Pluto. Let me look up the definition of a planet. This definition, which applies only to the solar system, states that a planet is a body that orbits the sun, is massive enough for its own gravity to make it, to make it round, and it has cleared its neighborhood of smaller objects around its orbit. If you want to consider Terran part of its neighborhood and it has now been cleared, we have officially made Pluto a planet. Because I don't see anything around here. Do you guys see anything around here? I don't see anything. So uh, Pluto is also more massive now, which means it's probably more massive too. Uh, more massive than the its rival dwarf planet, Ares. Let's look at the size comparison. I think Pluto is just a little bit bigger. Let me see here, look, look, look at the mass. The mass of Pluto is 1.5 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. 1.2 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. So we have now made Pluto a planet because it is bigger than the, than the other dwarf planet and I hope they don't crash into each other. Hold on, maybe I'll just, how about this, how about this? We will make Pluto crash. We will make Aries crash into Pluto. Okay, and launch. Okay, now collide, 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 and consume. Please don't turn into Aries. Please don't turn into Aries. Pluto wins the battle, and it has consumed an entire dwarf planet. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how you make Pluto into a planet. Again, it's officially joining the club. All the planets are just waiting for Pluto to come back to the table. It's like, please, Pluto, we missed you. We didn't want to expel you from the solar system, but yeah, we did. Explosion. With the death of Pluto, it was a very short-lived planet. It got too big for its own good. It developed an ego, too bit of an ego, and we had to extinguish it. Pluto needed to be put back into its place. Uh, that will conclude today's episode. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. It's habitable Uranus! <laughs> Sustainable water on Uranus! And all it took was approximately 27, 20 something supernovas and a few black holes thrown in between. And so